The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Welcome today to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm your host, Cornelia Stephanie, and we are here with my very, very special guest, Susan Glavin. And Susan Glavin is an entrepreneur. She is an influencer. She is a game changer. She is a mother. She is a grandmother, and she's a creator of so many wonderful things. She's an author. She's got so much wisdom and so many gifts to share that I'm so inspired by Susan, and she's coming on today, and we're going to talk about, we're going to continue on our conversation that we had just a few short weeks ago, and we're going to talk about Ask and It Is Given and having those deeper conversations about uh, success and fulfillment and really being able to go deep. The thing about Susan is, is that she inspires everyone that she meets. She, she is an influencer, like I said, and you can find Susan in Portland, where she's also a uh, facilitator of women's circles, and that she's been doing this for years. And she's a fantastic hair designer. And like I said, she's the creator of Be The Gift. And she's here with us today. Welcome back to the show, Susan. Hi, everyone. It's so great to be back. I'm excited about the conversation that we're going to have today because I think it's a very powerful and potent conversation for all of us to have. So thank yes. you for having me back, sweetheart. And I yes. love I'm so excited because uh, the last time you were on, um, we got so much great feedback from people. They were so inspired by uh, the talk of, um, and that's what I want to tell people. If they want, if the people that haven't listened to the show, you can go to CorneliaStephanie.com and you can look under uh, media and radio and all the archives from the past shows are there. And, and Susan inspired us uh, last time with really challenging people to stop gossiping and taking responsibility for the energy of what they're speaking out into the world, that our words are our wand. And so um, that was just such a fantastic show. And, and today we're going to go, we're going to continue on with that. Right now, I, I'm so excited. As you can see, I've got my lei on and uh, it's my Hawaiian lei. I'm in Kauai right now and I'm living my dream. And what I want to say about living your dream is that we all have dreams that we came here to live. And we have to stay true to our dream no matter what, because living your dream is hard work. It's not just having um, some imaginary experience and that all of a sudden that it's going to appear because part of my core values uh, was to, when I, when I'm, uh, get to Kauai, it's a milestone that I set for myself because that means that I will have done it. And so here I am in Kauai now and I'm here for one month. And the reason why I'm here for one month is for pleasure, but also for business because I am right now I'm at my friend's house who is uh, Larry Pio. And he is the best, absolute best tour guide in Kauai. So he doesn't have a website, but I'm going to be helping him with that while I'm here. We're going to get his website up and running. And I'm creating a, a retreat with uh, Larry that I'm facilitating here in September. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Larry's the best tour guide on the planet, and you can reach him, and you can also see him on Facebook at Larry Pyle, P-A-I-L-L-E. And you can also email Larry uh, at... Larry at secret 
kawaii.com. If you're coming to Kauai before September and you want to experience the greatest waterfalls on the planet with uh, somebody that's of high integrity that knows exactly the land, the heartbeat of the land, which is what I'm so excited by, by being here. And like I said, you know, living your dream is part of living heaven on earth. And what this show is about, it's about bringing you people that are living the authority in their life and that are actually living heaven on earth because this is what we've been doing. It's it's time for our evolution to experience heaven as it is in heaven on earth because war is out of our integrity. It's not true to who we are as unconditional love beings, the love beings that we are. And it's absolutely essential right now that we embody and walk the highest path so that we can honor the earth. This morning when I got up, I, you know, we flew in last night and, uh, uh, so there was, there's a time change and everything. And for the last few days, the divine feminine in me has been uh, feeling these amazing um, vibrations of feeling absolutely liberated. Liberated, feeling liberated inside, feeling liberated in the core. And that's what this planet is calling for, the divine feminine to be liberated, to be dignified to have her honor restored. And that's part of living heaven on earth also. So I just want you to know that the truth is, is that you are already whole and there's nothing broken within you. We're just releasing the old humanity, the old earth out of our physical bodies. And we're moving into higher vibrational ways of living and being in our physical body embodying the new earth and what this show is about and the people that I bring on and, and what it is that I do because I've been dedicated to this path for a long time, many lifetimes, but, but this lifetime it was really about ascension for me and so it's something I'm deeply devoted to and that's part of the liberation that I feel too is because we are moving into higher vibrational ways of living and being and it's super mm -hmm. exciting. So I created a course, uh, it's called a wholeness practitioner course that it's a retreat that I'm offering back in Laconer um, at the end of June and to assist people because you need the tools. It's just having the tools in order to, to do the work because our physical body, in our physical body, we hold um, our emotions and the emotion, emotional body holds all the memories and all the traumas from our past, everything holds is held in the emotional body. And so uh, in my retreat, in my upcoming retreat, that is something that we would cover is moving into um, emotional wellness and emotional wholeness. The mental body is the place where all the limiting beliefs, all the negative, negative beliefs of not good enough, it's too hard, um, I can't do it, uh, you know, all the self-doubt, all of those things are all stored in the mental body. And then the spiritual body is where we connect to our higher self. And that's that's the part that we're embodying now, walking with our higher self, fully embodied. And it's all possible, but you need the tools to be able to navigate these energies in these times. So go to CorneliaStephanie.com and take a look at my upcoming wholeness retreat that uh, and become a wholeness practitioner so you can serve yourself and serve the community, your family and the people by practicing living in wholeness every single day with the tools that that we all need. Because I, I wish that I would have had the tools that I've created when I began my process, when I didn't know what I was going, what, what I was experiencing with having so much emotional pain and so much trauma that was coming up for me. And it, and it would have been great if I would have had the tools, but there you go. It was partly for me to create them. And now I have. So CorneliaStephanie.com under Evolve, become a wholeness practitioner and the information is right there for you. And so uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have a, another show coming up next week, which is with one of my other co-hosts, Charlene Hess. And you can uh, experience Charlene Hess. Charlene helps us move into our calling and finding our purpose. And what would heaven on earth be like without 
living our calling and living our purpose. So it's all um, all part of the process of giving you the tools and the people that inspire you, that whatever you may be experiencing right now, that that success can be achieved. And my next guest, Susan Glavin, is going to help us now in moving deeper into um, success be because that's what she embodies. She embodies success. So we're going to take a break right now. We're going to be back. And before, while we're on break, I'm playing a promo, a commercial from my other co-host, Tom Lombrazo. And Tom has written an incredible book, and I want you to hear what Tom has to say. So we'll be right back at the Cornelia Stephanie Show with Susan Glavin. We'll see you in a minute. Hi, I'm Tom Lombrazo, and I'm here to tell you of my latest book, The Magic of Finding Love and Peace. What's it all about? Well, can you imagine you're driving home like I did 17 years ago in my Jeep when an angel comes into my Jeep and tells me what to do? I did it. And it saved my life because a terrible accident ensued seconds later. My life changed dramatically since that day, full of spiritual experiences. I have documented those spiritual experiences in this book so that you can relive them yourself. Perhaps you're going through your own spiritual transformation. If there's any doubt in your mind that there are angels or messages you might get from clouds or that you are a spiritual being as well as a human being, you must buy this book. This book is full of photographs, 375 color photographs, over 278 pages. Of those, 155 uh, photographs are of clouds, clouds that will knock your socks off. So, how do you buy this book? Well, go to my website, www.whenangelstouch.com, whenangelstouch.com. And on the home page, you'll see the, the photograph of the book, and it just says buy it. So please buy it. It's $25. It's a good bargain for it, what you're getting. And if you need to contact me by email, tom at whenangelstouch.com. And you can see me on Facebook every day at When Angels Touch Facebook. Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm transmitting live from Kauai today. I'm living my dream and I'm with my girl, Susan Glavin, and we're here to inspire you about Ask and It Is Given. And during our commercial break, Susan and I were talking about the deeper questions, about living in the question and where to start. And so, Susan, why don't you share with us what you were talking about, what came to you? Okay, I would love to. Um, and thank you, Lev. Okay, so we'll, we'll go into the piece about hopefully when I was in Africa, the very last day that I was there. And that was a very powerful question that I asked. But I think we're so, we're so eager to get to the answer of everything. I think the question is probably one of the most powerful things we can be in. And when I say be in, I mean be in. Be in the question. Don't look for the answer, but actually allow that beautiful question to fully unfold, to fully blossom. And sometimes it's never fully answered and it continues to unfold. And that's the beauty of life, I think. And um, I have some really, really powerful questions I want to leave your audience with today, actually, for um, I uh, hang out with some pretty awesome people every day in my morning, what I call my golden hour. And uh, the other day I was uh, having a conversation with Isis and she's become a beautiful mentor and a friend of mine. And I was kind of in this, like, what am, what am I doing? What, you know, what is the big thing? Although, you know, I have, I was just like deep, just kind of babbling on. I'm not even sure what exactly I was saying, but what she said to me, Immediately, she said, what fulfills you? What, is, what does success mean to you? What do you want to experience? And what do you want to create? And I was like, oh my, those are some juicy, powerful questions to be in. So... I have this really fabulous journal. I want to show it to you really quickly. I do all this fun artwork in it. 
Mm-hmm. And so what I did, I just started with the first one. Actually, the first question she asked me was, what is success to you? And I just wrote it up big and I just started to let it unfold what it was. And I kept writing and writing and writing and I'm still writing. Mm-hmm. What is fulfillment to me? And I started writing, writing and writing and writing. And I'm still in that, in that creation and allowing that to fully blossom to what that is for me. And I tell you, when you have clarity, I mean, for me, clarity is mastery. Yes, when you are really, those powerful questions, when you let the the soul, the highest essence of who you are, start to come through and answer those questions, it's like, for me, I believe that those deep heart desires are there for one reason only, to be fulfilled and experienced. So what I've been getting over and over again is ask and is given. Right. So, Right. Yes. Yes. What else I love about what you're talking about, Susan, is uh, when when you sit down and you ask yourself, what does success mean to me? What does fulfillment mean to me? This is part of being your own authority. And that's what you're inspiring us with, because I could very easily um, send you a quote on what success is, what the meaning of success is. You could read it. You could be inspired by it but it wouldn't make you the authority on it. But if you sit down and you're able to say, success to me means all the things that you're talking about, that now makes you the authority. That now becomes your knowing. That now becomes your truth. That's how you become embodied. And so I really appreciate you bringing that out and sharing that because that's part, because, you know, it's it's part of... uh, being our own gurus, being our own masters, and really knowing what it is from the inside out, our inner world to match our outer world. But we we have to investigate and ask those questions. Absolutely. And, and for me, what success is for me and someone else could be totally different. And mm-hmm. I think it's very important that we step out of the matrix of what society says success is this is what success looks like you know the house the car the this the this the this the this and you know it goes on and on and on and we get programmed with that a lot we're, we're grown up with that program and to really step out of that and to really look and see for me as the master as my own guru listening to my own heart's desires what is that for me and everybody's is going to be different and that's what's so beautiful you know, to step out of that and have own your own. Yes, this is what it is for me. Yes, and that is, so we have 7 billion people on the planet. And if, if everybody sat and just asked that one question, including the children, including everybody, because it doesn't matter how old you are, because success will change at different stages for, for different things in the now moment. And if everybody just focused on that one thing, well, we would have peace on earth immediately. Wouldn't we? Yes. So just I one thing. So I just invite everyone. Is this, is this yes, yes, I would love and I think it's a challenge. Connie would like me to challenge you. I call her Connie. Her name is really Cornelia, but if you really knew what I called her. <laughs> you call me the Ascension Queen, and I like that. I do, I do. And there's another beautiful thing that it's a very loving, tender anyway. So, yes, I would love for you. I would love to challenge you. I would love to inspire you. I would love to invite you to answer those questions. What does success mean to me? What fulfills me? What do I want to experience? And what do I want to create? And I guarantee you, if you spend some time really looking in your heart, and answering those questions, it's going to open up unlimited possibility for you. And that road is going to start opening up and you're going to start seeing evidence. You're going to start seeing that show up in your reality, guaranteed. You're here to inspire us with our soul's juice, right? Yes. So part of moving into our truth when we ask these liberating questions, these fulfilling questions that we're going to get the answer to. And then the only thing that we have to do is move into alignment 
with what it is that we're asking with. And when we're moving into alignment, it shows up so quickly. That's part of living beyond the veil. That's part of living beyond the human condition. That's part of living heaven on earth because that's what we're doing now. That's, right. that's what we're doing. We're building our new earth step by step by step, realizing our dreams. But we have to be courageous, like you said. We have to ask and we have to know that it is given when we're in alignment with it. Yes, babe, because that, I have a beautiful story about that when you said courageous. So I was a little, you know, there was this dichotomy happening inside of me. You know, a lot of spiritual teachers will say, um, we're creating our life as we go. Other people say, you know, you have a destiny, you have a mission, you have a purpose here that's already destined. And I was like, okay, I'm confused by this. What is it? What is it? And I was walking around the lake, finished my walk, went throughout my day. And I rarely watch TV, but I sat down. And I was watching this little movie. It was a little love story. And at the very end of the movie, it said, we all have a destiny, but not everyone has the courage to follow it. And I was like, oh, you know, the hair stood up on my arms. I said, I think that was absolutely for me. You know, and I think you can choose however you want to do this. But for me, it was very profound. And it does take tremendous courage to follow your heart. Tremendous. It, really does. it takes tremendous courage. And it's like, like right now, you know, me being here in Kauai, this is a milestone for me because that, that has, um, it's a representation of me staying true to my, my dream. And my dream was that I want to be able to do the work that I do, which is to inspire people into their own authority, to help people transform and move into the life of their dreams, and to be able to do it mobily and, and go anywhere at any point in time. And so now I'm, I'm, I've actually made that real. And that's why this is such a potent time. It's so exciting that when you stay true to what your heart's calling is, no matter what, that's what we came here to experience. I mean, just imagine all the children out there knowing that because of the work that you're doing and how courageous you are with showing up and asking those questions, what is success to me? What what fulfills me, how that's going to change the vibration on the planet. And that's what we're here to do, to move into higher vibrational ways of living and being with our courageous hearts. Yes, absolutely. I'm with you on that. Yes. So it's really important. What are the questions that you're asking? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I love that. I love that you're challenging us with, with that is asking people to sit down and, you know, because one of my co-hosts, Charlene Hess, you know, Charlene, yes, I uh, she, she had told me that, um, you know, uh, she, she does well with challenges, uh, because sometimes, you know, we need that challenge. We need, we need to be challenged. I challenge you because then, you know, it, it really gets us to, okay, I want to, I want to, I want to take on that challenge and I want to do that. So getting having that spiritual practice the way that you're devoted to your practice we know that um our spiritual woo woo is everything Number and one. i love to know because don't you know how back in 2012 or whatever 2011 when we, <laughs> like spiritual woo woo you know we're hiding in the closet you know with our doing our spiritual mojo and our spiritual woo woo and that you know don't 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 be too spiritual don't be too this and now spiritual is sexy spiritual is hot Spiritual is bold. Spiritual is powerful. Spiritual is rich, richer than the richest. So I can serve you better. That's right. Shine your light, baby. And big and bold. Shine it big. And if you don't have that spiritual practice, you're looking outside to somebody else to tell you what to do. Yep. And part of being your own authority is discovering your what it means to you and that's the bottom line and that's how you become a knower yeah. to know what it is and we want to hear what your what success means to you so talk to us at at the facebook page and let us know and and write into us and share with us what success means to you so because your words are your wand and by sharing it out 
it's going to create a boomerang and a ripple effect, and it's going to come back to you a thousandfold. Well, I can tell you the first word that came to me when I, when I said, what is success to me? It was freedom. Freedom was the first, and I just went from there. That was the first thing that came through, and it just went above and beyond that. And, and success to me was having mastery over my environment, mastery to create and manifest, that to me is success. You know, those, and, those were three of the things that came up and it was two pages. Yeah, absolutely. And freedom, what does freedom mean to you? Same thing is what does freedom mean? Like right now, I'm living my life in freedom. I'm free to go. I can do what it is that I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. And that's part of living free from the matrix. Yes. Because being in the matrix is the place where we felt enslaved, where we felt not good enough, where we felt not heard, where we felt not honored. We're not slaves. We're powerful, sovereign beings Absolutely. here to embody our highest truth. Yes. And if you can really accept that greatness, that magnificence, that you are all gods in form, woohoo! That's we the are, we are, baby. That's a lot of light to hold. You have to really be able to own that and embody that. And there's tools available for you. There's amazing yes. tools available for you to be able to to practice your own wholeness, to practice living in your truth. And um, we're going to take a quick break. It's hard to believe that it just goes by so quick, oh, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's, it's amazing what happens when, when you're having fun and you're living <laughs> in freedom, right? I love talking to you, Susan. We'll be right back. back you're listening to the cornelia stephanie show and i'm talking with susan glavin and we are living heaven on earth and sharing our joy with you so before we went to break we were talking about embodying success embodying fulfillment asking those deeper questions but you again have to be courageous to sit down with your journal and start digging right and so um, what are some of the other experiences, Susan, that you've had doing this process that really um, can take us deeper? Well, I've had a few. There was my Africa adventure, which I would love to share, but I'd love to share this with you because this just happened a couple days ago. And I was actually even not shocked, but like kind of a little bit stunned by the question that even came out for me to ask. I really believe because I'm always inviting my high holy self. I'm welcoming my high holy self daily to be embodied and to, you know, to prepare the way for me. So um, I was in meditation and Jesus came. And I can actually say that like, yes, Jesus did come with many other people because the thing that I have been told is take us off the altar that was never our intent. We are here to be your friends, your companions, and your mentors. You know, we walk the way. We're back here now to support you in that. And I totally, yes, because of the conversations. But it was so amazing. As I'm sitting there in meditation, the question that I asked was, how can my heart be the ruler of my kingdom? And I was like, whoa, that's a powerful question. I said, that is so powerful. And I wanted to share with you just a little bit about what sure. he told me. He said, be still, my little one. He says, your power and light are great. Such magnificence takes time to fully integrate. Be patient as your journey home to the heart, for it is a splendid one indeed. So those questions to be in those powerful questions and to really look deeper than the surface questions, the first ones that come up, give yourself a minute. And I just invite you to be aware of when you have a dream, you have a deep desire. And when you look outside of yourself for, you know, agreement from others, validation from others, that's the good, that's a good thing to notice because that's when you know you're stepping out of your sovereignty out of your authority, out of your mastery, and to just notice that. And then step back and go, whose dream, whose passion, whose desire is this? It's mine. And it's mine to live. It's mine to fulfill. And I don't need anybody else to tell me so. 
Exactly, because why would an empowered creator uh, need someone else to, because you you don't need anybody else to, to right. tell you. You know, when, when we used to play the victim, yes. when we used to play the victim, the victim always looked outside like, will you come and save me the victim paradigm, victim save your paradigm. And that's part of the old emotional core wounds. So, but when we used to be the victim, we would need somebody to do something for us. When the truth is, is that we can do it for ourselves. We can absolutely do it for ourselves. And sometimes you need a witness. Sometimes you need yeah. help. It, it just depends on what it is. And, and, and whatever it is, it's okay. But bring the other part in the balance is what you're yeah. talking about. Exactly. Bring the other part in the balance, the part that has never before uh, been consulted by. Yes, that's right. Like, and that's it. You know, it's a life. What it, it was Einstein that said he was a little rash about. It. He says a life not examined isn't a life worth living. And I think that people feel that it's not worth living, but they're not living if they're not examining their life and why they're doing the things they do, the patterns that keep occurring over and over again. You know, so it's it's a beautiful thing that you have your show that you can spread this beautiful gift and this awareness for people. And I just invite people to just, you know, go in and ask for help from your A-team, I call them. You know, if you don't know, get some really beautiful, powerful information, get the guidance, get the direction that you need, and it will show up. It will absolutely show up. Yeah. It's, it's all about your, it's all about your empowerment. It's all about our empowerment. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of times when, um, when we, when we're transcending through the energy, we're feeling victimized when we're not feeling empowered. And then we notice and we're like, I feel like a victim here. And sometimes what I tell people is when they're feeling the victim energy, really go in and feel it. Yeah. Like let yourself totally fall into that old trap one more time and allow yourself to feel the victim, to really feel to heal. That's that's my thing is feel to heal because everything can be healed with the love that you are because all we need to do is allow the love. You know, the, 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 the big thing about all of this is grief. We have to grieve. We have to learn and be okay with the suffering that's going on and the grieving that's going on because we're grieving and letting go of a life that we thought we were living that was fulfilling us when it's truly not. And to allow yourself to grieve that process. I think that right there is a really big piece is the grieving piece because we can certainly, we're capable of grieving and being in, in bliss at the same yes. time. We're, we're capable of doing that because we're multidimensional beings. And as multidimensional beings, we're not just linear, just one thing. We're, we're able to, to grieve our past. We're able to grieve our losses. We're able to grieve what's hurting us, a relationship that was toxic, that had to be let go, whether that is a job, whether that is a relationship, whether that's a family member, it could be anything, whether you're having a challenge with your body. But the bottom line is to allow yourself to grieve and keep staying true to what brings you success, what brings you freedom, asking those deeper questions. And know that you're not alone. Absolutely. And, you know, you talk about grieving and sometimes it's actually that is definitely a part of it or being angry about it or even going things have changed and what I have noticed personally is that when my radiance my vibration is higher because I do I'm very devoted to my daily practice and 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 those things that make me feel good and they're very practical and they're very simple that's the thing you know but we just have to do them and that's like with my trip to Africa because one of the things on my list was to um stayed all the four seasons all over the world okay that was like and not that that's not nice and that would be wonderful but as you know my, the beginning of my trip was very interesting and I had the most beautiful experience the first you know place that I stayed the grounds were exquisite it was absolutely extraordinary you know I set off my luggage in my room and I walked outside in their giraffe and zebra 
walking around the grounds. And I was like, it was almost surreal because I'd never seen anything like it except for in the zoo, right? So there they are. And then the next day we take this beautiful Jeep ride and we go to Masamara, we go to the Serengeti and we have the tenting experience, right? Which is glamping times 10. I'm not kidding. These tents were nicer than my home. Oh, I that's right. This is amazing. So we had the most amazing experience up before sunrise, out on the Serengeti, herds of elephant, giraffe, you name it, lions. And it was extraordinary, right? We do that in the evening and then and the morning and an evening. Then I flew to Zimbabwe. And because uh, I'm a big lover of waterfalls. And I thought, well, I can't go to Africa and miss the largest waterfalls in the world, right? Yeah. So I go into Zimbabwe and I check into my hotel and I go to the front desk and I said, hey, I said, is there an open market somewhere, something that I can, you know, buy some stuff to take back home? She goes, oh, sure. She goes, you can walk from here. So I take off and I'm walking and I've traveled all over the world. And of course, the men come with their wares and they're like, and I'm like, no, thank you. No, thank you. You know, and but they were very, very aggressive. And I was a little uncomfortable by myself with all these men surrounding me. So I duck off into this little shop and I walk in there and I meet this man named Mark. And Mark says, will you help you? And I said, well, yes, I'm looking for some Malvadite. It's the green stone that's mined here. And he says, Okay, he goes, what you looking, what what size? And I tell him, no, the little egg-shaped size. And he goes, I find for you. And he runs out of his store and he comes back and he has all these eggs. And I'm like, oh. So I'm picking out the ones I want. And I said, well, where's the open market? He goes, I take you. And I said, fabulous. So we walk out and two of his friends join him. And they're like in their early 20s, right? And we have the best time walking and talking. And they kind of keep the guys at bay, like keeping me, I'm like this little queen going through to the market, right? So I do all my shopping and I'm getting everything that I want. And we're walking back and he says to me, oh, I like your shoes. And I said, oh, he goes, very expensive, huh? And I said, well, I actually get them at the Adidas employee store. So they're much cheaper. And he goes, oh, I would love to get some of those for my wife. And I said, he goes, how would I get some of those? And I said, well, what size does she wear? And he says, a six and a half, seven. I said, well, that's what size I wear. I said, you know what? I have another pair in my room. And after I go to Victoria Falls tomorrow, I will bring them to you. And he was like, oh, no, really? He goes like, what time? What time are you going to be there? And I said, I promise you, I will bring them to you. I said, you can trust me. I keep my word. And he goes, okay, okay, right? So, Susan, I, I want to I wanna, uh, take the last break, and then you're going to tell us uh, exactly with your generous soul that you gave her practically the shoes off of your feet. We're going to be right back with Where is Your Juice with Susan Glavin. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. I'm talking with Susan Glavin. And before we went to break, Susan was talking about how the gentleman at the store wanted in Africa, wanted a pair of shoes for his wife. And of course, Susan's generous heart was offering uh, to give her shoes to him. So finish the story, Susan. So the next day, of course, I get up and I'm off to Victoria Falls, which was just epic. And it was so beautiful because they they rent raincoats because the falls are so strong. And it's this lush, tropical, you know, warm, humid, which I absolutely thrive in, environment. And so people are walking around with their raincoats. And I have mine. And I'm walking and I'm like, I feel like I'm being baptized by this beautiful, powerful waterfall. So I never put on my raincoat and I was, I was, I was just getting drenched with this, you know, and I'm just drenched as a matter of fact, in my pack, my money was wet by the time I was done. That's how soaked through I was. And I was just so grateful 
for this blessing. And that's exactly what it felt like to me. Oh my, I don't want to cover that up with any plastic. Thank you very much. So I did that. And then I went back to my room, got my other pair of shoes and put them in a bag and off to the market I go. And he's standing on the corner waiting. And he's all excited to see me. And I ran, I go, here's the shoes. And I'm talking, I said, now, are you sure you're going to give these to your wife? Or are you going to sell these? He goes, oh, no, no, I promise you. I promise you, I give these to my wife. I said, wonderful. You know, and so we get a little hug and back to my room I go. And I sat on my bed and I was sitting there and I said, okay, this has been a beautiful trip. It's not that I'm not grateful for it. This would be a lifelong dream trip for many, many people. And I'm sitting on go, but where's my juice? That's exactly what came out of my mouth. Where's my juice? And I just sat there. Something is missing for me. Where's my juice? So I continued on about my day and they export tea and coffee. So I thought, I'm going to go into the market again and find some tea and coffee to bring home. So I go in, can't find anything, and who shows up? Mark, what are you looking for? Tea and coffee. Oh, I take you, right? Off to the supermarket we go. I get my tea and coffee, and we're walking back. He's walking me back to my hotel. And I say to him, hey, Mark, I said, have you heard about that really great restaurant in town? It's called Puma, authentic African cuisine and tradition. I said, do you know anything about it? And he goes, you come to my community. I go, what? He goes, you come to my community, my wife prepare you meal. I said, really? He goes, yes. What time I pick you up? My friend has a cab. I said, how's seven o'clock? So go back to my room. I walk into my room and I have one of those. Okay, wackadoodle head, what are you doing? Moments, right? <laughs> I did. Okay, we last saw her leave the hotel and we never saw her again kind of a thing. I did, I got, well, you know, people would tell me, you're crazy. You actually did that. So I sat on my bed. I felt in, uh, my whole body just lit up. I went, I'm in. So I was out by the pool having a beer. And I was a couple minutes late. And I walk out of the hotel. Of course, he doesn't come inside the hotel. He's outside waiting. And before I left, I'm going to back up a little bit. I created a, a table game about connection. And I always, with two other amazing women, and I always throw a couple in my bag just in case. So I had grabbed that, a pair of my Ray-Ban sun sunglasses, which I hated. And I had this hematite heart-shaped rock that I was going to bury in the Serengeti, throw over the falls, but I kept forgetting. I thought, I'm going to bring that too. So we walk and he goes, you're late. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. I was having a beer by the pool. And he goes, you like beer? And I said, yeah. And he goes, we stop and get you beer. And I said, oh, no, you don't need to do it. He goes, no, no. So I get in the cab and he has his six-year-old son in the back seat. And I'm like, oh my God, right? Then he's just adorable and we're talking and his friend, we have this amazing conversation. And the little guy, I said, I have something for you. And I give him the table game. Connie, you would have thought I gave him a brick of gold. He held on, he didn't even know what it was. He just held on to it, it was just a gift, right? So we're about 20 minutes out of town. We pull over and I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, what's in there? We get out of the car and there's this little refrigerator and a counter. And we walk up and everybody's staring at me like, not like bad, but like, oh, you know, she's awful white, you know? And I'm like, hey. <laughs> and I'm like, hi. And he buys three beers, right? We get back in the cab. We pull up to his house. I walk in and there's this long hallway. And at the very end, there's this room and there's these two little twin boys, two years old, and they see me and they start walking backwards and pointing their finger, saying something. I didn't know what they were saying. And there were people in that room. There was another room to the right and then a room to the left. And he walked up and he says, welcome to my home. And it's a 10 by 10 room with a bed, a dresser, a coffee table. His wife is in there preparing my meal on a little cooktop and his two boys. So they all live there. And I went, fabulous. And I hop up on the bed and we start talking. And of course, she shows me her shoes. 
And she goes, oh, I love my shoes. So many compliments. And she's just, and I'm like, oh, I love this, right? So I'm showing the boys pictures of my grandchildren in snow that they'd never seen. And we're just having this amazing conversation. And she prepares the meal and she sets it out. And it's kind of this mushy corn and mushy vegetables and goat. And this is their meal that they have every day, right? And she places all out. Then she walks in with this bowl and a pitcher and she washes my hands. Okay, at this point, I'm like, oh, I'm like this. I'm just so moved. And so we have the dinner, you know, it was incredible. And then we pulled out the table game. And the first question was, if you could see anything outside your window, what would you see? And his wife answered, oh, I see my community. I see my community outside my window. And in that moment, I had this awareness of they didn't need anything else than what they have in their life, their community to be happy. They were in a 10 by 10 room and they were so happy. They were so honored to have me in their home. I was moved to tears. I have to tell you, I was just, my heart was like this, boom, where's my juice? Here's your juice, sister. Here's your juice. And, you know, I gave him his glasses, but the one thing that he was so moved by was the heart-shaped hematite rock. When I gave that to him, he held it to his heart and was so moved. He says, oh, this is so special. He says, let me show you where I keep it until you return. And I was like, so it was profoundly beautiful. I had him, I asked if the boys could come back because I had some chocolates I was stashing. I was going to take on the plane, but I said, forget that. The boys are getting the chocolate too. Took them into the hotel by the hand and all they could say was, beautiful beautiful they were looking in my room like oh beautiful went back outside hugged mark and i said you i'm, I'm back there again were the highlight of my entire trip so what i really discovered i had this amazing beautiful journey stayed at the most beautiful <laughs> places we we got 30 seconds okay You're, you were the highlight of the show the <laughs> of the trip you are the highlight of the trip and with everything that happened that was it was about deep connection with other people just being in the the beauty of one another and that's what we're here to do on this planet susan11.com yes. Thank you so much for being here. You're an amazing influence. We love you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Namaste. Aloha. 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 Yeah.